let's talk about lies and presentations of the fetus. But it makes it sound more scandalous when we say lies and presentations. Okay, we're going to talk about fetal lie first. Remember, fetal lie can always change, but it's much less frequently after 34 weeks. At that point, the baby has much less room to move around. A little tight in here, Mom. Fetal lie is going to be described in relation to the mother's long axis. So if the baby is lying up and down within the mom, this is called a longitudinal lie. This is going to be our most common. If the baby is lying parallel to the mom's spine, it is a longitudinal lie. If the baby is laying across, perpendicular to the mother's spine, this is what we call a transverse lie. Now remember, babies can do all sorts of things in there, so they won't always be so well behaved. They can also have what's called an oblique lie. This is where there's some kind of diagonal somewhere between longitudinal and transverse. Quiz time! If this image was taken in the sagittal plane on the mother, what's the fetal lie? Longitudinal. If our probe's sagittal and we see a profile or a long axis of a spine, we know that the baby's in a longitudinal lie. Now, if we put our probe down sagittal on the mom again, and we see something like this, where we're getting a cross section of the baby's abdomen, um, we get a transverse view of the spine, we know that the baby is in a transverse lie. Easy enough, right? Okay, let's talk presentation. Presentation is going to depend on what fetal part is closest to the mom's cervix. If the fetal head is by the mom's cervix, we call this a vertex presentation. Another name we can use for this is also cephalic or cephalid. If the baby's backside is closest to the cervix, we call this a breech presentation. And if the baby's in a transverse lie, well, we call that a transverse presentation. Okay, so we know that when the baby's head is pointed down, it's in a vertex presentation. A vertex presentation can further be described by the relationship of the back of the baby's head to the mom's pelvis. You may recall we can refer to the back of the head as the occiput. All right, let's swap out this baby. Oh, sorry, baby for Rona, who can turn her head just as a baby can. So if we have them in the vertex position and the baby's head back the head or occiput is on the mother's left posterior portion of the uterus in the pelvis, this is what we call left occiput posterior or LOP. If the back of the baby's head is laying on the posterior aspect of the mother's uterus, this is what we call occiput posterior or OP. If the back of the head is touching the anterior portion of the mom's uterus on the left, that would be left occiput anterior or L-O-A. So we can have a variety of positions the baby's head can be in, but know that they're going to be in reference to where the back of the head is or the occiput, and it can be described as maternal left, maternal right, maternal anterior, or maternal posterior. Okay, so we talked about the first longitudinal lie. Uh, that vertex presentation or cephalic presentation where the baby's head is closest to the mom's cervix. Another type of longitudinal lie we can have is the breech presentation. This is where the baby's buttocks is going to be closest to the mom's cervix, and this is going to be the most common malpresentation. Sometimes breech presentation is going to require a C-section delivery. So let's talk about a couple different types of breech presentation. 
The most common breach presentation or position is going to be frank breach, which means the baby's thighs are flexed at the hips. They're going to both legs be completely up by the baby's face. This is going to be the most common breach position, and this type may be safely turned to allow for vaginal delivery in some cases. Another type is referred to as complete breach. Both the hips and lower extremities are going to be found in the maternal pelvis. So the baby's backside is going to be closest to the mom's cervix, but the feet will be down rather than up towards the baby's head. The next type of of breach we can have is what's called an incomplete breach or a footling breach. This is where the hips are extended and one foot, uh, if it's one foot, it would be called a single footling breach or they may even have both feet, that would be a double footling breach, um, are the presenting parts closest to the cervix. There's an increased risk with this type of breach for umbilical prolapse. Um, as the cord can enter the cervical ostring vaginal delivery. So remember with cephalic or vertex presentation, we could dis further describe how the baby was lying in reference to where its occiput was. With a breech presentation, rather than describing where the head is, we're gonna describe where the baby's backside or sacrum lies. So for example, it will follow exactly like the occiput, but instead of the head, we're looking at the tail. For this example, we have left sacrum anterior. That means that the baby's sacrum is pointed maternal left and maternal anterior. So how do we describe a transverse lie? Easy peasy. Wherever the baby's head is on the mother left or right, that's how we're going to describe it. So this example would be maternal right, and in this one, that baby's head is maternal left. And finally, we have our oblique lie, where the baby isn't lying truly vertically or horizontally, but more on a diagonal. This can further be described by which maternal quadrant that baby's head can be found. So for example, in this image, the baby's head is in the mother's right lower quadrant. So that's how we could describe this oblique lie. I hope this helped you understand fetal lies and presentations a little bit better. Let me know what topic you'd like me to cover next, if any, and I will see you guys soon.